All right, guys, it is three o'clock. So I want to go ahead and get started. This uh, particular session block had a lot of really good um, speeches going on and talks going on. So I kind of expected we'd have a little lower numbers just because they're going to get spread out so much. But thankfully, we are going to be releasing everything from this conference uh, to have as a VOD review. You can watch the videos later that you weren't able to miss or you weren't able to be at. Um, we're not exactly sure where we're putting those yet, like where we will release them. Uh, but as soon as we have that information, we'll give that to you guys. Uh, but that being said, because there are so many good sessions in this time slot, thank you for being here. I appreciate you uh, joining. Um, this talk is going to be really about why your club matters and, and what value you can get from it. I'm going to sort of tell the story of how Springfield's club started um and and what we've been able to do and why and and what we sort of had guide us throughout that process uh this will be very conversational and, and hopefully because with all of our clubs the different size schools we have whether we're focused on more community-based team or competitive team all those are different for all of our programs and the purpose of this conference is that you guys are being served not me saying what we do um so i i will share my experiences uh but if you have questions or want more specific guidance or you just want to take the conversation somewhere else based on what's on the slides i'm happy to talk about that with you uh especially because this is the last segment of the day i'm also happy to go a little bit over if we have a good conversation uh, or want some questions answered so uh, I appreciate all of you being here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Dalton McGee. Uh, I am a science teacher at Lanford High School. I teach honors anatomy. Um, I'm the director of esports for Springfield Public Schools. We started the program uh, a few years ago. It kind of morphed through the years, very similar to the story you heard Coach Rakowskis give uh, in his opening keynote today. Um, I am a tournament organizer for the IHSEA, so this year I will be overseeing Rocket League, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and Fortnite, uh, and then Coach Turkster will be doing the other three. And then also this last year, I've got to serve as a Scholastic Fellow for the North American Scholastic Esports Federation. Basically, that is a very long hour job um, that we uh, build esports curriculum. So we write uh, classes to incorporate esports into the general classroom. Uh, I wrote an English language arts class, and hopefully that just brings more interest to those uh, classes. And, and schools actually adopt those. Uh, it's, it's through the University of uh, California, Berkeley, um, and, and it's really, really cool to do that. So I've got a little bit of experience doing all kinds of different things, uh, but my big passion at the end of the day has always been the Capitals and, and our club. And that's sort of why I wanted to talk about this today. Um, well, I want to talk to you a little bit about who we are. Um, our district is District 186 in Springfield. Uh, in our district, we have three public high schools, and each of them has about 1,400 kids. Now, when I was student teaching in the fall of 2018, I, I was my last semester of college, um, I was student teaching at Southeast High School, one of the three in our district. And there we started a gaming club where we got together after school Fridays and played Smash. And then we traveled to Chicago or St. Louis to Microsoft stores, believe it or not, in big malls and had um, tournaments that we participated in. It was just that. And then I got hired at Lanphier in January of 19. Uh, Lanphier High School is uh, one of the other three schools. And they also wanted their own team and club. So they started their own. So then I was managing the Southeast Club that we had just started and the Lanphier Club in the building I was at. And it was already a lot. And then Springfield High School, where I actually graduated from, um, said, hey, we want esports too. Why are you doing it over there and not here? So we sat down with our district athletic director who oversees all the schools and our superintendent. And I said, listen, there is a vacuum of need for this in our district. Kids want to play it. It offers so many opportunities, many of which I didn't even realize at the time nor have any experience in. I was like, we need to do this. And so um, around the same time, I got a weird 1130 p.m. DM on Twitter from a company called Zero Gen, and they had like no followers. And I'm sitting here like, eh, this is spam. This is weird. We were a little successful already, and they're probably just trying to piggyback on that. Then I got another DM at 1230 that night, and I'm sitting here like, why are these people so adamantly trying to get a hold of me? And I finally answered, and I was like, you know what? I have nothing to do tomorrow morning. Sure, I'm going to come down to St. Louis and meet you. Why not? And I walk in, and I am blown away by what I see. This 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 a jersey and apparel company called Winning Streak. They were starting this esports division of their company. They wanted to really get into, but they didn't have any schools yet uh, that were on board with them. And it's so perfectly timed and so perfectly, you know, needs lining up 
aligned with us and Zerogen that they helped us rebrand these three schools, the Lions, the Spartans, and the Senators, to be one all-district team called the Capitals. And that's where we were born. We chose black and white as symbols of you know strength and consistency and something that all the schools could have investment in and not just be one of the school's colors over another. Uh, and that's where the Capitals happened. And we've had two years as the Capitals heading into our full third. Um, and, and originally it was just these competitive teams. You can see uh, both these pictures are the competitive teams, the COVID year, the white jerseys there, a little smaller just because you had to have less people in the esports room. And then, all, of course, we all went home anyway. Um, but then this last year, we really started pushing this club idea. We need to have a big esports club because so many kids, uh, as we're going to talk about, can't necessarily make that top cut for those competitive teams, but they still want esports to be a part of their life. So we're going to talk today why it's important we provide them that opportunity. Coach Turp and I in our tryouts thing today call it the safety net that you need to create for those kids. Um, and so, you know, you want to make sure that you have aligned goals for your club. You want to talk about what they want to accomplish, what you want to accomplish. You want to have good structure. We're going to talk about all these things today. Um, you need to have a faculty sponsor. In our case, that is me. Um, and you have coaches if you have a competitive team. Uh, maybe you're looking at philanthropy. Maybe you're looking at community service. We're going to talk about all of this a little bit in this presentation. And like I said, if you have any point that you'd like to stop me because I talk a lot, um, I would appreciate getting the chance to read and not talk. Uh, and then we can talk about whatever resonates with you guys. As any presentation this week goes, um, we're also different. Take what resonates with you. Chase your joy there. And if it's something that doesn't really fit with your program or you don't agree, great. Let's talk about it and, and leave what you don't like, take what you do and get the most out of this conference you guys possibly can. So um, let's go ahead and move on and talk about why an esports club matters. Okay, Competitive teams are great. But as I just mentioned, when you have particularly with bigger schools and, and you have a lot of kids trying out, our first year of having a competitive Fortnite team in IHSEA, we had 110 kids try out for that team. And what was it? Six duos, 20 or yeah, 12 of them would be able to play varsity, 12 JV. So suddenly I have a problem where 75% of the kids that want to play Fortnite have no space to do so in the IHSEA. And, and the roster requirements in IHSEA are good because you don't want Springfield to happen to be able to field 100 Fortnite kids, and that's the whole league. Um, but what do you do with those kids that can't make it? That's 75% of these people that try out that just could not fit on a competitive team no matter how many we put on there. Well, that's where this club comes into perspective. Also, varying skill levels, right? Uh, you could have a kid that passionately loves Valorant, they're not very good at it, right? They, they aren't going to play varsity or compete with the likes of Barrington and, and schools that are doing so well in that game, but they need a place to play. They need a place to feel part of something and part of a community. The club matters. Maybe they don't want to be invested three nights a week, four hours a night for practices and matches. Maybe they just have time between a busy work schedule and home family schedule uh, to be there once a week. You know, the club offers that opportunity to do that, uh, and then you can focus more on the building of you know these relationships, this community, as opposed to winning. Winning is not all there is for some kids, and it's not all there is for coaches or really for any for a healthy program. Winning should not be all that esports program is about. So then you have this club, you get this community of like-minded students, you get growth opportunities, you get leadership development, you can do philanthropy, you can do community service, all these great things that the competitive team doesn't have time for, but the club can make their identity. Okay. Um, and so the Capitals, we, we really leaned into that latter part, that uh, community involvement, that philanthropy has become a big part of our identity uh, in the fall of this last year. Keep in, mind, keep in mind, this is all during COVID. Our student executive board wanted to do a charity event. So they started this event called Capitals for the Cure. And in that event, we were able to work with other high schools in the IHSEA, work with Zero Gen, that uh, jersey and apparel sponsor we have, and get a team store made for all the schools to have their own in Susan G. Komen pink breast cancer gear. And then each school had a competition to sell as much gear as they could to their community. The winning school did end up being us, which is why I have this beautiful little pink trophy right here. Um, but we then took all the money raised and we donated it to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. And that was awesome. And I was so proud of my kids. I mean, I, I literally did not have words for how proud I was of them. But then 
Christmas comes up and we're having our last exec board meeting of this first semester. And they say, hey, we should do something in the spring too. Okay, what are you thinking? And our vice president said, it would be super cool if we could play more games than the IHSEA offers. There's only six. And we have this club of kids that might want to play this game, might not be good at those six games, but is super good at this other one. They want an opportunity to compete. Why don't we offer an event where they can finally do that? That's where the Olympics came in. So we offered 15 games in Olympics style since we missed out on the Olympics last year with COVID. And the kids got to compete in all of those going for gold, silver, or bronze. You get the most trophies. You get to claim the most money raised for your school. Then you get to be the team that's in charge of deciding what charity everyone's money to participate goes to. Again, we were able to win that one. Whitney Young almost beat us. Whitney Young was very close and competed very hard, but we ended up winning by two points in the medal standings. Uh, and we donated that money right back into our community, into the Springfield Urban League, an organization that helps uh, students that are economically disparaged or for whatever reason are having difficulties getting to school, succeeding in school, gives them resources to do that. This is esports making that difference. Can the competitive team do that? No, they don't have time. They're practicing six hours a week, competing three. That's just not viable. But these kids in this club that love esports start to realize that you can chase your joy and find that your passion is able to create so much good outside of just gaming. If they're not a kid that wants to get super involved in that community service, just wants to show up and play Super Smash Brothers for an hour every week to have something to do, they're there. If they want to be the vice president of a club that suggests a massive statewide philanthropy based in esports, then they're there. So esports matters. And it gives this, these kids a place where they can feel part of something. We're lucky here that, you know, I think it was 52% of our uh, competitive team also played another traditional sport. But when you get to our club, those are the kids that would otherwise find no identity in their school, have no investment in their education. Suddenly grades go up, attendance goes up, involvement and, and pride goes up. All these things are things esports able to do through this club environment. So I get really passionate about this. And if I feel like I'm ranting at some point, I apologize. But that's why it, it just is so capable of good. And, and at the end of the day, what we want to create is an inclusive space for everyone to have investment in their education, investment in their experience in high school. Uh, and then they will carry those skills and those passions into their college life, into the rest of their lives. This little thing you can do right now is a thing that can branch out and affect so many more people just because you made a difference in their lives in these four years. So let me go ahead and go to the next one. Here are the six things we're going to talk about to make sure you have a good esports club. What do you need to make it? Okay, that's what we're here to talk about. Found that foundation you need. Okay, you need to have your administration support you. You need to be very efficient, effectively and efficiently organized. Uh, you want to establish smart goals. We're going to talk about what those are. You need your students to be bought into the program. You need to have very high expectations and you need to chase your joy personally. So let's just go through these. And uh, if, at any point, if you want to throw something in Q&A or chat, um, I'm going to take a pause. Uh, hopefully I'll see that pop up and we'll talk about those things, um, particularly with the administration. Why I really encourage you guys to share what your circumstance is and then hopefully we can you know, share some thoughts amongst ourselves and figure out uh, a good way to strategize to help things be successful in your district. So admin, if you don't have your admin supporting you, your program is going to struggle, okay? It might survive, but we're not here to talk about how to make sure your esports club survives. We're here to talk about how to make it be the strong, unshakable foundation for the rest of your program, right? And you're not gonna have that level of success if your admin doesn't support you, doesn't believe in you, doesn't buy into the vision, they have to be there. So what do they need to see? Well, you have to make sure that if your focus is competitive, you are treating yourself and holding yourself to the expectations of a traditional sports team. What things do the football coaches have to do to make sure they have all their ducks in a row? The baseball coaches, you need to make sure you're capable of doing those things and you preemptively do them because whether it's fair or not, the expectation on us is that we are not going to work. We're, we're not a sport. We're not successful, right? So you prove that by being that much more capable and that much more uh, planned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Brad's question here. When you started having both that open style club and competitive, did you have other adults uh, support help you 
get going during those meetings and practices? Yes, I'm super lucky um, in, in my district that I sent out an all district email, which I'm going to do again at the beginning of the school year and say, hey, the capitals are always looking for responsible and passionate adults to be part of our organization. If you have interest in coaching uh, one of the teams and I list the six games or just being a part of this esports gaming club, please reach out to me. It's all I said at the beginning of the year and the responses come in. In fact, my Fortnite coach got a hold of us because our superintendent is very good friends with his wife. And so our superintendent of the entire district saw this email, said, hey, doesn't Aaron play Fortnite? Do you think you should talk to this guy? And that's how we got to know each other. Put the line out there and see what fish bite. Um, it's much harder to walk around the building and say, hey, I have this idea. Will you do this with me? Uh, because I'm sitting here as a biology teacher. If someone comes up to me and asks me to invest in something big time while I'm at work. Ugh, like, no, let me, I need to think about that, right? But send it in a non-pressuring, open way, and you'll get responses. There are going to be adults in our buildings that have interest in this, particularly because I just turned 26, and I already feel like I'm not the baby of my school staff anymore. I have so many teachers that are just out of college, brand new. And the fact of the matter is, our age demographic is really into this, right? So just throw that, cast that out there, see what bites, uh, and hopefully they'll come and help you out. You won't get elite coaches for all six games. It's not realistic. If we could make coaches appear anywhere or make players appear, right? It would be a different story we're talking about. So you take good help. You take people you trust. You put them where they're passionate and where they're strong and the rest does work itself out. Uh, and, and the last thing I would mention about that question, Brad, is if you don't get all that coverage, so you don't get six coaches or a coach for each game, maybe you have four coaches that only care about league, right? Um, don't overextend yourself. Let your program naturally grow. It can be annoying at times because you want to jump into all six games, but let it grow at a natural pace so that you can take on what you actually can handle because success breeds success. If you try to do everything and struggles and it's hard and it's annoying for the kids, you're going to have a problem with your program, both competitively and in this more casual club environment. Okay. So, um, what I was saying about the having things laid out, the expectation on us is so high because it's not a traditional club, not a traditional sport, right? So you need to have your plans laid out. You need to be able to go to your admin and say, here's everything I have planned, right? Uh, is it going to be exactly what they want? Probably not. In fact, uh, what I found is there are a lot of school policies that I had no idea existed, but that's what they're there for. So you need to go to them organized with a plan and strong, clear goals, which we're going to talk about a little bit. Say, this is what I want to do. They're going to say, wrong, 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 wrong. And then you go back and you fix those things. Some things, you know, you might want to push back on. That's your comfort level with your admin, with your, you know, district, whatever the case is. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to take a drink real quick. But you have to be willing to adjust. Because at the end of the day, that first bullet point, if they don't buy in, it doesn't work. You need to make sure they feel good about it. Okay. And keep a paper trail of everything. I don't care if it's an email, text message, whatever it is, always have record of conversations you have with admin because not to have a gotcha thing, but we'll forget we're teachers, we're tutors, we're, you know, maybe we're just community members that are working with this high school. You know, we need to make sure we have everything so we can just look back on it and say, hey, we talked about this. Do you still feel this way about it? So make sure you keep that paper trail. Um, and the last thing I'll mention about this is what I sort of started with and alluded to. They don't know what esports are a lot of times. Okay. While there are new teachers coming in, the average age of administrators is not in their 20s. Right. So a lot of these are, you know, my parents' generation where they saw Pac Man in the arcade and that was like it. That was the thing. And now I have Pac Man on my iPhone and it's casual. Right. It's, it's a different time. So when you're talking to these administrators, don't use too strong verbiage or words or, you know, it's like you're teaching kids when it comes to a new content, right? You, you're not going to use the collegiate level pro content. You're going to talk to what they will be able to understand and work to build them up together. Just make sure they always feel like you are working with them, working for them and not condescending or talking down because they don't know what they're talking about that can never be this thing there's just one fly in my room that's driving me crazy right now so i apologize for that but work with them okay make sure they feel invested they feel like they're part of the process then they're going to support you i have been so lucky in district 186 
to not only have one high school that was on board, but all three high schools, all three principals, athletic directors, uh, they saw the success and, and they saw the GPAs, they saw the involvement. It's all good if you do it good. So um, let's go next. <clears throat> Organization is one of the other keys to success. You have got to be organized, okay? I put up a screenshot here of the first thing uh, potential new members for our club and team see as they enter our Discord. It's a five-step process. It gets information you need from them, that interest form. It gets them directly in contact with me. They add me as a friend on Discord and let me know they filled out the interest form. They meet the staff. They go to our website, look at the coaches, see who does what, introduce themselves. They get all of our social media integration because we're going to be using that together anyway. They need to have it. It also then, even if they don't join anymore past step four, they have that now and others will start to get that. So it grows that sphere. And then lastly, share the Discord link. You are in here, tell them to join here. Okay. This early organization matters and it helps get all your ducks in a row to have everything in one place. Discord is weird and i and i say that because i know particularly for those of you in here that are part of cps uh you can't have your kids in the discord server with you and and districts are different um with the new sopa laws there's going to be some gray area with discord and essentially the way the laws work is once one district has registered them as a, a approved vendor the uh, there's precedence for the others to do that so what you want to do is be looking out for other districts that have said Yes, we say Discord is a fine place to communicate and share information with our students. Um, CPS, it's not going to happen. I see no way that happens. I've, I've talked to Todd and all of them up there. I just don't think it's going to happen in CPS. But there are other things you can do. You can have this five-step process in Google Classroom. You can have it through email. You can do whatever you want to do. I just think it's very important to make sure you get their information, you have a direct line of contact, and they spread the information themselves so you're not doing all the legwork that it takes to do that. Okay. When you um, continue to talk about organization past that first day, I wanted to sort of tell you how our club is structured. And this is a take it or leave it moment. Um, we have a lot of kids. We, we are expecting a club of 400 students or more this year, <clears throat> which is insanity. And I know that it's probably the bigger club in the state, um, but that's why I'm talking on this. And, and we organize it with a student executive board right under a faculty sponsor, student exec board, and then everybody else is part of the general board. Our student exec board is the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and executive member at large. It's a five person body. So when they vote, there is no tie. Um, I hold veto power as faculty sponsor. It's important to make sure they know there's veto power available. Uh, and then when they go for those positions, they have to run. They have to get experience giving a speech in front of everybody, running for that election, and then they get voted on. And seniors do not vote. Uh, because they're not going to be part of the group next year. Staff do not vote, but both of those bodies can endorse people. And that becomes another fun little bit of life experience they get because they'll say, Coach McGee, I want your endorsement for president. Here's why I think I'd be a good president. They can make that case to me. Then I listen to everybody make a case. And then right before the vote happens, any senior or staff that wishes to gives their endorsements. And that way you have a little bit of influence on you know whether this student should be there or not. Um, cause kids do tend to listen, but at the end of the day, it's their club. And, uh, I like that they get to have that involvement, that voting, that experience of running for office. Uh, it's, it's, I think very valuable to them and just like not getting on the competitive team. It's also sometimes a very good lesson in humility and losing, which I think is really valuable in our clubs every bit as much as the experience of winning and good things happening. Um, freshmen can't hold exact board positions. You just don't know them. Don't do it. Let them have the experience and get their feet wet. Uh, and then we have our exec board meet uh, once a month through the summer and twice a month through the school year. And then our general board is everyone else. Um, they meet once a month uh, and then we just let them know what's going on. They participate in things. They have a good time. We have weekly club events for this game or that game, depending on what's going on. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention is this uh, tiered involvement we have. So I mentioned earlier, the great thing about a club is you can be as much or as little involved as you want to be. For our district, what works really well is because we do have a Title I district, a lot of kids don't have a lot of spare money to throw around. So we wanted to make sure they could have an awesome experience if they couldn't pay a penny. So we have the Capitals Club. Anyone can join. As soon as they're in the Discord and verify, they're a part of the club. They can come to our club meetings. They can participate in club events. They can do all kinds of fun things. We then offer a Capitals Club Plus membership. And this is for students that 
want a little more out of the club. They want to get a free T-shirt for each of our philanthropy events. They want a free drink and snack at all of our club functions. Um, <clears throat> they get extra access in the Discord to like a college recruiting channel and IHSEA and NACIF opportunities channels and, and a safer to work memes channel. Um, and they get this little extra perks here and there. That is just a $25 for the whole year charge, pays for itself very quickly for them. We're able to make that a low charge because of sponsorships and we're lucky about that. Um, and, and so they get all these cool stuff, but it's a little extra money to help the club out as well. And then we have our competitive team, which they have to try out for. And if they're put on the competitive roster, it's $50 a year. Um, I don't know what your guys' districts are like, but in our district, the one-time athletics fee, so no matter how many sports they play, is $85. But our district athletic director decided we would keep our finances separate in our club account because esports is not officially sanctioned by the IHSA. And when you are, all the sports money gets put into one pool. They divvy it out how the school sees fit. And we just didn't want to bother with that. So we keep everything in our club finances account. And then we charge $50 for competitive players, $25 for club plus, and no money for the club members. And the caveat to all of that, which is really important to me in the Title I district where a lot of kids don't have the finances, um, or I think important to any district just based on the principle of inclusion, is any student who qualifies for free or reduced lunches in our district is immediately waived from any of those fees. If they want a club plus membership, they qualify for free or reduced lunches, they've got it, period. We're going to take care of them. And again, that's possible logistically because of support from sponsors and, and community partners. And, and that's a kind of perhaps a later uh, program thing to figure all those out. Um, but I just want to show you guys what we do. And that way you can uh, take what you like, leave what you don't, so on and so forth. Last thing I wanted to show you about this organization slide is this bad boy right here. So I'm not going to I don't need to show you all of it because um it's not super important you read all of it because I'm kind of telling you all this anyway. But this is our parent pamphlet. So we have an eighth grade freshman preview night at all three schools where they come and learn about all the sports, meet people. We set up a switch. We let them play Super Smash Bros with some of the players. We get to know the parents and we give them this handy dandy pamphlet. Tells them who I am, what we are. There's a letter right on the inside flap, if I could open it, about what esports is in District 186. Introduces them to me. We have information on the competitive team the club and time commitment, which parents care a lot about. And then on the back, we have the financial information and contact information. So this is very handy to just say, let's have a short conversation. I'm Dalton McGee. We're doing esports. We have some great successes. We're really excited. You guys are here at the table. I'm going to give you this. So one, we don't waste time talking about money here at the table. And two, I don't have to tell you nine times. You have the pamphlet in front of you. Organization matters. It reads as professional. It reads as reliable and trustworthy, and it's very important that you take care of this. So I just wanted to show, you know, we do this. Um, it's real easy. I literally did this in um, Google or in, in uh, Google Docs, and I just made a landscape, three columns, made it, done, printed it out. So it probably helps that our team colors are black and white because that saves on color printing. But there's that. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I'm gonna take a break to take a drink and pause a little bit here because my throat's very dry does anybody have any questions about uh admin or organization of the club in general ten out of ten would recommend these naked juices by the way couldn't suggest them enough this is not an official plug by the ihsca i just think anybody who enjoys their life should have one of these now and then all right so next thing i want to talk about is these smart goals <clears throat> SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Time-Based or Time-Bound. Okay, When you're laying out goals for yourself, for the club, for a specific player, circumstance, whatever it is, I like to use this model because it makes you very cognizant of what you need to be thinking about when setting that goal. You want a specific goal. I don't want, don't say, you know, it says, I want more visitors. Don't say, I want more players in the club. Say, I want 30 more players in the club than I had last year. Okay. Measurable. <clears throat> is that a good measure? 30 is. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, I can say that there's 30 more. Uh, I can say that we have 10% increase. Those kind of things are actual measurable goals to see were they achieved or not. Don't just say better engagement, right? It, say, it says uh, things like that are bad. You can't tell whether that happened or not. It's completely subjective and biased. Is it attainable? Am I going to go from having 50 people in the club this year to 300 next year? No. 
right? Make sure it is a reasonable attainable goal and it's realistic. You have a lot of challenges ahead of you as an esports sponsor or coach. Okay? It's a new world for a lot of districts. It's a new world for a lot of administrators. Don't do things that are going to burn bridges or are not logistically possible. Okay. Make sure that they are very realistic. Um, not to say that you can't have auspicious goals. One of my favorite things is, uh, you know, have a healthy disregard for the impossible, right? But you also do need to live in reality. And then lastly, be time bound. So what would be a good example of a SMART goal? Okay. Uh, so membership, here's a bad example for a SMART goal. If I say, oh, I want more players next year that have more fun in the club. Obviously, that's a crap goal. Okay. That's not a SMART goal. But if you say something like, I want to have 30 more players next year that we have registered by July 30th, and I want those 30 players to write a letter to administrators about why they're happy to be in the esports club by November 1st. That is an awesome goal. Okay. You're increasing your membership. You're increasing awareness. You have dates that are set. You have a measurable goal. You can say whether it was achieved or not with objectivity. So, I really like the smart goal thing. I hope you guys like this as well. Uh, but when you're having goals set for yourself in the program, your team as a whole, a specific player, maybe getting better in a game, make them smart goals. Tell them, no, is it specific? Tell me, did you do it on time? Did you do a certain numeric advancement? These are great types of goals. So I wanted to share those with you guys. <clears throat> All right. Student buy-in, super important. Uh, you could drag everyone through the mud or you could casually walk behind, right? And enjoy their successes. They have to be invested. This seems like basic stuff, but I, as the last couple of years have gone on and I've got to know programs around the state, it's not always the forefront of the program as it's developing and it needs to be. You need to know what they wanna play, how much they wanna play, how much they're willing to spend on esports. Once you know those things, this is the information you need along with getting to know how many there are, who they are, to set up those SMART goals, okay? So make sure that you have asked them what they wanna play. We know, talk about rated M games, for example. Um, in Springfield, our district is of the opinion that it is a parent's responsibility to determine what games the kids should or should not play. And it's a school's responsibility to provide opportunities for you know secondary education and, and further advancement. So during the Olympics this last year, we had Rainbow Six Siege as one of the events. A lot of schools weren't able to participate in that. We knew that was coming, but that was part of our student buy-in. Our kids wanted to play Rainbow Six. So we went to our admin and said, can this happen? If your kids don't want to play it, it's not a problem. Um, but don't do too much and make sure you're doing exactly what they want. Because in my mind, at the end of the day, um, we're passionate about it. That's why we're here. You're taking an afternoon off on a Wednesday to be here and talk. The passion's not in question. Are we serving the needs of our students or are we doing something we wanted to have when we were kids? Make sure that our, our goal is driven by them and their needs and their desires. Um, if they are not invested, your program will be as unsuccessful as if your admin's not invested. Really, you are the like puppeteer here, perhaps, but the puppet has to work and they it has to be uh, good. I mean, it won't work if it's a crap puppet or if parts of it are broken. You need everything strong so you can make things work. That wasn't one of my strongest analogies. Okay. High expectations. Um, at the beginning of our Discord server, right under that uh, check-in form you saw earlier, we have our rules, okay? Um, we participate in the Good Luck, Have Fun pledge. Um, that was talked about in yesterday's closing remarks. Um, it's uh, just to be a good sport, to care about your community and your environment. Um, there are the seven tenets of it, and then kids can go to anykey.org and sign their name, and over a million students have in the United States. Just to say we're going to be good sports and gamers and it's just good for the community and it's good for optics so that's a good thing to do however we have our server specific rules as well so this is just what ours look like could work for you guys however it needs to what needs you have you know we had to put no spam some schools might not have to but i have a team of fortnite players that loves emoji spamming so i put no spam in the server specific rules and these expectations you set <clears throat> this is one of those like the basic training of a teacher carries over well to this you have to hold them to that okay you're going to be close to your kids you're going to have good relationships with them but they have to know immediately off the bat this is what i expect of you when you do not meet that expectation these are the consequences if these consequences continue we're done 
There's no room for that here. Um, I, I've had the displeasure of having to kick off a couple people off our team. I, I had to kick two seniors, including the captain of our smash team, out of the team and out of the club altogether um, last school year. And it was it was tough and it, it was it was heartbreaking to me. I hated doing it, but it set a really powerful and important example for the rest of the club. And it's your responsibility to to deal with the fact that that's not what you want to do. You have to. Uh, make sure it's a safe environment, just like we heard yesterday in our closing remarks. Make sure it is a consistently enforced environment. And when those things are true, uh, the club can thrive and you don't have to worry about toxicity. And you make sure your brand, your your culture on your team and what other people see of your team is one of positivity and, and one of uh, a good behavior. You don't want to be the people that in the IHSC discord, uh, people think of that school and they think of a certain type of behavior. You just don't want to be that. So make sure you have those high expectations. And the last thing I wanted to mention here is chasing your joy. At the end of the day, I'm talking to the people right now that are invested in helping run their programs, are invested in helping coach their teams. Um, do what you love, guys, and, and, and make sure that your kids see that. We say in the Capitals, work hard, play harder. We, you know, we, uh, my passion is philanthropy. And, and when I was in my fraternity in college, uh, the th focuses we had were philanthropy and leadership development. You see that in my program. Other people care a lot about academics. And not that I don't, but like that's their thing. Like they love it. And you see extensive uh, work towards achieving that, that brand, that joy. Whatever it is you want to be known for and you care about, make your identity part of the team. Because when the kids see that you're authentically being yourself, you're authentically working your butt off for them, then they're going to be invested and they're going to do the same thing for you. Okay. They're not going to buy into someone that they don't think is, is bought in themselves. So um, build relationships and still lessons them, create memories. Uh, at the end of the day, these kids are not going to remember whether they got second or third in, in state and Fortnite in their sophomore year, 50 years from now. What they will remember is my high school esports coach made a difference in my life and, and, and made an impact on me. And so just remember that perspective. Um, there's a great video that I encourage you guys to watch. I'm going to go ahead and type uh, what you would want to search for in chat so you can find it. It's sort of a, excuse me, um, epilogue to this talk. Um, it's called Every Child Deserves a Champion. And it is a Rita Pearson TED Talk. It's, I think, only eight minutes. Um, and she talks about this. This is, this is really big for me. I didn't have time or really want to spend the time of this just watching a YouTube video together. Uh, but do me a favor and watch that. See what she's talking about, how your job as a teacher, as a coach, the content, 50 years from now, nobody's gonna care about. They will care, but they won't remember the details of the content. They will remember how you made them feel. They will remember feeling empowered and inspired by you. And they will remember that you made a difference in their life. So make sure you chase your joy. You, you fulfill your passions with theirs. And when you do that, uh, things tend to work out in esports. Okay. Be, be, be the right kind of esports coach. Um, so that being said, I wanted to leave a few minutes at the end for questions. Uh, you know, if we're done early, that's totally fine. That gives you time to go watch the Rita Pearson video. Um, but does anybody have any questions at all about some of the things we've talked about? Let me go back to um, the slide that had the six keys here, if that wanted to help spark memory. Um, but, you know, if you have a specific question about your program or something that happened or you want just general advice, I'm here to serve that. Uh, stick around for a couple minutes. If you have no questions, I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, tell your friends to go watch the bottom of this so they can get this experience, too. And uh, I hope you guys have had a wonderful Wednesday. There's some extra networking time until about four o'clock. You're welcome to hit that networking button at 345 and meet a couple extra people today. And then we'll be right, uh, back right at noon tomorrow. So I'm, I'm very excited uh, to for the last day. I'm uh, going to be talking about how to coach Fortnite tomorrow. I get my brand as the dirty Fortnite coach and uh, excited for that. But yeah, does anybody have any questions? Any of us want to do in a club open play session where way more kids show up than you have machines? That is a great question. Um, I see that problem in Fortnite because our lab has six computers. Um, Smash is easier because they can bring their own switch. Um, but when they're on computers, um, I think that the best way to avoid that would probably be some sort of prior to the, them showing up um, sign up form. Uh, so you know how many you're expecting and you can say, hey, 
uh, we're going to have this group of people come at this time, this group at this time, or maybe just some other activities too. You could have them doing, depending on the amount of space you have, you might not have enough computers for all of them to be playing, uh, but maybe they do some sort of like a uh, leadership development activity. Maybe they do some sort of group bonding activity. Um, you can do things outside of actual gaming with them that would be impactful on their time being spent and, you know, the club together, uh, and then make sure they get their cycles in the games as much as they can, but more people, less game time. It happens. Try to figure out how many you're going to come as best you can and uh, make adjustments based on that. Beer club organization does a general board vote on things, make recommendations, take support, or just uh, refer to everybody else. So I think that what we try to tell our general board is if you have issues, talk to your exec board members. Um, our exec board knows that one of their main responsibilities is discord engagement and being in there, talking to people, being part of the community, being goofy, um, just so they feel like they can talk to them. The exec board does not hide away and make decisions in the dark. Um, anytime a general board member has some sort of thing they want to bring up, they talk to one of the exec board members they're close with. Um, the exec board is pretty diverse in terms of like what friend circles are represented, so to speak. Um, and, and, and to that point, the hierarchy that we have is general board talks to exec, exec talks to me, um, and then exec chooses. And whereas competitive team, it is player talks to captain, captain talks to assistant coach, assistant coach talks to me, and however it needs to be handled goes from there. Um, but yeah, the exec or the general board does need to feel like they're part of the team. You know, they, they get a say, uh, they were huge in our deciding what games to include in the Olympics. We sent a survey out, everybody fill this out, please. Uh, whatever games you want to play, let's find out. Um, and it was actually the general board that suggested to us, hey, you should send this out to the rest of the IHSEA uh, to find out what all those kids want to do too. And that's exactly what we did. So um, as long as they feel like you're going to listen to them and they have a voice too, uh, they didn't want to run for exec or didn't get it. And they recognize that, uh, but they still matter. So just make sure they feel involved. It's a great question. Any other questions, everyone? Got a couple more minutes here. That 10 second delay on typing. If there are none others, I really appreciate you guys all being here. I hope you enjoy the time. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Oops, let me put the, there we go. Contact information out there. You can get a hold of me on any of those um, is, the, is the good ways to get a hold of me. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. I'm gonna go on a scavenger hunt looking for a key this big somewhere in Springfield. Uh, because if you find it with the clues they've given, you get a free Volkswagen bug. And uh, one of my kids that's really been working hard on the esports team, uh, his parents and I are going to go to try to find him a new car. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing with my afternoon. Okay. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you for coming.